Live from 42nd and 2nd, this is New York's very own PIX11 News at 6. Now at 6, rearranging New Year celebrations yet again. Tonight, how New Yorkers are planning to ring in 2022 as COVID-19 forces closures and cancellations for the second year in a row. Plus, a surge in COVID cases impacting the NYPD and other agencies. Tonight, off-duty officers heading back to work amid an increasing number of sick calls driven by Omicron. But first... This is breaking news from PIX11. And the breaking news coming out of Lower Manhattan tonight. The jury has reached a verdict for British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell. Thanks for joining us with PIX7 News 6. I'm Corey Chambers. I'm Vanessa Freeman in for Tamsin Fidel. Let's head over to PIX11's Ayana Harry live in our newsroom with the very latest. Ayana. She lived a lavish lifestyle as a British socialite, but now Ghislaine Maxwell is headed to prison after federal prosecutors argued that she was Jeffrey Epstein's partner in crime. Ghislaine Maxwell was the longtime companion of Jeffrey Epstein, and before Epstein's 2019 suicide in a Manhattan jail, he was accused of sexually abusing young women and teen girls at his homes across the country for decades. Federal prosecutors argued Maxwell recruited and groomed teen girls for Epstein, and during Maxwell's trial, one woman testified that when she was 14 years old, Jeffrey Epstein abused her and Maxwell participated. Maxwell pleaded not guilty to six federal counts, including sex trafficking of a minor. Her lawyers argued Maxwell was unfairly taking the blame for Jeffrey Epstein. But after hearing weeks of testimony and after five full days of deliberations, a jury in Lower Manhattan found Maxwell guilty of five of the six counts in this case. She now faces up to 65 years in prison. Reporting live from the newsroom, Ayanna Harry, PIX11 News. Ayanna, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now to the pandemic. The head of the World Health Organization says he is hopeful we will leave the worst of this crisis in 2021. Yeah, you know, the news comes as the WHO reports an 11% increase in COVID cases worldwide. Nearly 5 million new infections are reported between December 20th and 26th. It's an encouraging news from South Africa tonight. Scientists there just released a study saying people who were infected with Omicron may have increased immune protection against the Delta variant. So that means it could actually help displace the Delta variant, which is a more harmful strain of the coronavirus. City MD has closed 31 locations in the tri-state because of staff shortages and an increase in demand for testing. Locations across the five boroughs in New Jersey and Long Island and Westchester, they have been affected by this. And we do have team coverage for you this evening with all the latest details on how this new wave of cases is impacting everything from at home gatherings to public safety in the city. PIX 11's Nicole Johnson leads our coverage tonight with more on what the NYPD is doing to deal with these staffing shortages. Nicole. And Vanessa, what the department is doing right now is canceling days off for officers scheduled off during the weekend so that they can cover the sick calls we're talking about. And that's not all. You know that there's the five day isolation period now that's also helping the department to get officers back to work once they show no signs of symptoms. COVID-19 moving fast through our area, hitting city employees hard. Police officers are not only fighting crime, but thousands are out sick battling COVID-19. Chief David Barrer, acting chief of department, tells PIX11 News the department has been making adjustments as sick calls come in. What do you want the public to know at this point? Should they be concerned? Well, let us let us be concerned. We're always, we're, we're the police department, we're always concerned for everyone's safety, but we, we've gone through great measures uh, with planning so far more than 6,000 NYPD employees called out sick on Tuesday. That's just about 20% of the department's workforce of that number. 3,000 are officers with flu like symptoms and about 1500 of those officers tested positive for COVID-19. As a result of the staffing shortage, the department sent out a memo telling officers with regular days off this Friday and Saturday to forget taking off. Instead, they will have to work through the weekend to make sure New Year's Eve in Times Square is covered, as well as the rest of the city. With, with the cancellation of their regularly scheduled days off, we have significant uh, amount of police officers now that will be able to backfill any, uh, any members of the service that go out sick. 
The FDNY is dealing with a similar situation. Right now, 30% of EMS workers and 17% of firefighters are on medical leave. During the height of the pandemic last year, the FDNY had about 25% of EMS out sick. Fire Commissioner Daniel Nigro. It's certainly affecting our, our manpower status. Uh, every one of our EMS stations is open. Every one of our firehouses is open. Every call is being answered. But it's certainly stressing the department. And as far as the Department of Sanitation and MTA, well, both agencies are operating with normal schedules. Those employees, though, are working extra shifts to cover those sick calls. In the meantime, the FDNY and NYPD are both asking New Yorkers to not call 911 unless you have a real emergency. For now, we're live in Lower Manhattan. Nicole Johnson, PIX11 News. All right, Nicole, mm -hmm. thank you. Well, with less than two days before 2022, New Yorkers are probably working on their plans to ring in the new year as we speak. Yeah, once again, COVID will play a big role in adjusting those plans. For some, it means canceling gatherings and celebrations altogether. Pick Seven's Calorama in Times Square for us tonight with our coverage of that part of the story. Cala. Corey and Vanessa, we were able to ask the Times Square Alliance about the threat of Omicron crashing this party here in Times Square but they are confident that the measures put in place will keep this event safe. No, that's our time square confetti. It's the confetti test before 15,000 fully vaccinated people enter Times Square to ring in 2022. We're going to have people come later. We're going to mandate that they wear masks. And we're also not going to fill the, the spectator areas. The city's health chair and soon to be Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine urging New Yorkers to stay home and ring in a safe 2022. The cities around the world are canceling those in person events. I think we should do that as well. Infectious disease expert Syra Madad helps lead the COVID 19 response for the New York City health and hospitals. Her advice is to know your circle and make sure they're vaccinated. We want to make sure that people that are entering our home are also fully vaccinated. We want to encourage people to get tested as much as possible, but I do understand testing is very hard to come by right now. But as long as I know they are fully vaccinated, they're no longer, they're, they're not symptomatic. They haven't had a high risk exposure. They're in our social bubble. I feel, I feel comfortable. But with celebrations moving to living rooms, restaurants are fearing another blow. In New Year's Eve, it's like, you know, it's really like the cherry on top. Amali in Midtown had 50% of their reservations cancel in just 24 hours. The holiday season in December is, you know, makes up like 30 to 40% of like the total sales for the entire year. So within, you know, 24 hours, we just started seeing, you know, 50% of that just completely go away. Clearly a very tough time for restaurants, but as you heard, they're gonna stay open for New Year's Eve. They'll have their, they'll be there until the ball drops, of course, in honor of their staff and everyone who's coming in to dine. As for Times Square, if you are one of the 15,000 people coming here to celebrate, know that you must be vaccinated, you must wear a max, and you'll only be allowed in at 3 p.m., very different than years past. We're live in Times Square. I'm Calorama, PIX11 News. All right, Cala, thank you so much for that. Well, Hoboken we say it, it's mask mandate today. Whether you're a worker or visitor, masks are now required to be worn inside businesses and public buildings, regardless of your vaccination status. Newark has also put the requirement in place, while Patterson is only requiring masks to be worn in city buildings. Business owners already acknowledging that this is going to be hard to enforce. Like anything, we have to get used to it. It's not our first time doing this. We've done it before. So we just have to, you know, realign, get back to what we used to, what we did last year. And, you know, we got to fight through it until these mask mandates come back down again. You don't want to start anything with people and you don't want to turn business away, obviously, because uh, we're a business. We want to keep people happy. City inspectors will be spot checking businesses for compliance. Those not complying will first be given a warning and could be subject to temporary closure as a last resort. When we come back, our coverage continues how the rising case of COVID in New York State are putting a strain on hospitals here in the city. We're live with details. Plus, the American Red Cross is sounding the alarm as blood supplies hit a critical low all across the country. How you can help straight ahead. Man's behind bars not accused of shooting his own parents. Happened on Christmas morning at the family home in uh, Hewlett, Long Island. 29-year-old Dino Tomasetti lives in East Williamsburg. Police found his 64-year-old mother shot in the head, 65-year-old father shot in the back. Both were taken to the hospital and are expected to survive. 
Police did not disclose the motive behind this attack. Well, in New York, 6,700 people have been hospitalized with COVID, according to the latest numbers from the state's health department. And some hospitals here in the city are now operating with limited capacity. PIX 11's Henry Rossoff is live at one of those hospitals, Kings County, Yo, and he's Flatbush. Right Good evening, Henry. Yo, what's this right here? Good evening. While well, we're talking about limited capacity here at Kings County, nearby Brookdale, up at Harlem Hospital, Coney Island Hospital, Elmhurst. Remember that from the beginning of the pandemic, they all have less than 10% bed capacity. Why does that matter? Because it makes it more difficult to handle everyday traumas like car crash trauma, heart attack, burst appendix. This really is straining the entire healthcare system. Most of our patients that have severe illness, uh, specifically people who end up in the intensive care unit, are non-vaccinated. And Dr. Adrian Pop, chair of infectious disease at Huntington Hospital, says if the unvaccinated continue to overwhelm hospitals, he does have a plan in place. We also have uh, provisions made to open, uh, open new beds or even go uh, further down to cancel certain elective procedures so we have more uh, availability for, uh, for the COVID surge. At this pace, by next week, New York could see as many hospitalizations, around 9,000, as we saw last winter at the height of the Delta surge. Two weeks more at that pace, and we'll be around 17,000, the peak of the first wave. We've been deploying individuals, extra staff, extra ambulances, National Guard to help. Governor Hochul spoke again today about working to expand hospital capacity, enhanced masking, testing, and vaccination. But she again stopped short of asking New Yorkers to change their behavior. We're basically preparing for a January surge. We know it's coming. I'm not calling for severely restrictive measures. I am calling for an urgent messaging so that the public takes this seriously. Incoming Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine has been outspoken about the need for more health safety measures throughout the pandemic. We're seeing such an astonishingly, astonishingly high number of cases every day, yesterday 27,000 in New York City, that it is now resulting in a rapid increase of hospital admissions. So Levine says this is a critical moment when people have to take simple actions, like working from home if they can, and canceling New Year's Eve plans. We have a totally depleted and exhausted healthcare workforce, and many of them are now out sick with COVID, which is only making that matter worse. So we really do need to act to protect our hospital system. That's our ultimate goal. The healthcare system is also reminding folks don't just go to the ER if you're looking for a test. Certainly go if you feel that you've been severely sick or injured, but if you're just looking for a test, there are other ways to go about that. Many hospitals do have separate testing lines, but ERs are so slammed right now. They want to make sure people aren't just doing that. Live in East Flatbush, Henry Rossoff, PIX 11 News. Thanks to Navigate Henry, thank you for your report. Meanwhile, Mayor-elect Eric Adams will become New York City's mayor minutes into 2022. He just announced his swearing-in ceremony will happen in Times Square shortly after the ball drop rings in the new year. Adams, along with controller-elect Brad Lander and public advocate Jamani Williams, decided to postpone their joint inauguration ceremony to a later date. Of course, to find out more about the new COVID treatments, vaccines, COVID cases across the tri-state, and of course, the very latest headlines about the pandemic, make sure to check out our website. That's pix11.com slash coronavirus. Well, a new commercial kitchen is open in Queens tonight, and it's the first of its kind. And we come back, we'll introduce you to one initiative that's offering space for anyone who dreams of starting their own food business. We'll be right back. Tonight, there is rising concern for the nation's blood supply, which is now dipped to alarming levels and could force hospitals to hold off on essential blood transfusions for patients. Historically, low blood supply levels are uh, still an issue for the American Red Cross, which supplies about 40% of the nation's blood. The ongoing decline, though, comes at a time of year when donations typically fall. A combination of the holidays and travel and the um, the pandemic resurgence and people being cautious and um, places being closed for the holidays, it really, really all combines to, you know, to be a significant challenge. Right now, both the uh, New York Blood Center and the Red Cross in New York are under a blood emergency. To find out where you can donate blood, visit redcrossblood.org. Well, food entrepreneurs in Queens will soon have a nice big space to create and grow their business, and they don't even have to travel far. 
Apex yeah, Michelle Ross has more on the first black uh, woman-owned commercial kitchen. From the outside, it looks like a regular brick building on a busy street. But for Diana Rose, it's a dream come true. We were stretched thin on capital. We were stretched thin on sleep. We were stretched thin on every resource. But you know what? The community said, no, Diana, we got you. She was so close to giving up, but powered through. Essential Kitchen in Jamaica, Queens is the first Black-owned commercial kitchen in New York City. And it's not an accomplishment she plans to keep for herself. The 6,500 square foot space will be available for fellow food business owners and entrepreneurs who may not have the capital to create and scale their own businesses. Now they'll have a resource and a place to come make their body butters or make food. She's now providing that. She's filling that void. The co-working space will facilitate opportunities to succeed in making custom products, catering meals, or putting out special orders. There's such a need for it so the impact stretches from everything from actually providing the physical space for businesses to prepare delicious and custom meals but also providing the resources like access to grant information and contracts she says small businesses are not always counted into the numbers of city contracts because they don't have the capacity the facility is not fully operational yet but with donations they hope to start soon so that even the young chefs have a place to cook something up and it doesn't matter what your background is diana says as long as you have the drive and ambition to create you have a space here to grow your business in Jamaica, Queens, Michelle Ross, PIX11 News. <laughs> good to see you there. Yes, yes. All right. Well, you know what else is good to see? What else? I don't know, six degree temperatures. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> but we, we're just going to cling <laughs> to that 60. <laughs> <laughs> that one day, I, Byron. Wait, I, thought he, Vanessa, I thought he was going to say it's good to see Byron. Always good to see Byron. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, G's at home going, I'm going to be back Monday, Corey, so you're going to be happy because, you know, G is off, the much-deserved vacation. He's fine. Some folks were asking. He's here. He's okay, but he'll be back Monday. Uh, right now, your temperatures at this hour, we're where we were yesterday at this time. We're somewhere between 40 to 46 degrees. Not bad, right? I mean, your average high is around 40 to 43 at 2 p.m., so we're running above that. Radar is quiet. Look to the south. See the rain down there? That was where we were last night. Remember I said on Monday, we have the chance of the next 72 hours of seeing precipitation. Well, we're just about at the end of that 72 hours starting tomorrow. So we still have rain in the forecast possible tonight and tomorrow. Watch the rain future cast. There it goes. There it goes. And it's saying, okay, through Thursday. I don't really care about that. This is light rain. It's not a big deal. The big deal is Friday. We're not going to see any rain for the ball drop. It's going to be dry. And the other thing. You want to know about the temperatures, right, for New Year's Eve? Okay, we're 53 hours now until we can say good night to 2021, right? Good riddance. And 2022 is going to be a great year, God willing, right? I use an area of high pressure in its location, wherever the location is, to figure out what the weather's going to be. If the high's up in Canada, the temperatures are in the 20s, we get winds out of the northwest, that makes us colder, takes us below average temperatures. If the high's in the Ohio Valley, that's a good thing. We heat up. That's down sloping winds over the mountains, and it heats us up above average. And if we have high pressure to the south, that's even better. That gives us a southerly flow. It taps into those 70s, and that's what's going to happen. Tomorrow, mm, almost, but tomorrow night, yes. So you see the temperatures in the 60s, Jacksonville, 70s over Florida. We'll get up to the 50s tomorrow. It may take until midnight. But talking about midnight on New Year's Eve, we're tapping into that warmth again from the Gulf of Mexico, and by the ball drop, we could be at 50 degrees. 50 tomorrow, that's going to take all day to get to 50, though, as that southwest wind kicks in on Friday. We're warming up, and then Saturday and Sunday, this is what you guys are talking about, Corey and Vanessa, we could see a 60 in the uh, forecast, it looks like. I send it back to you guys.